Shalom, shalom, shalom. Greetings, grace, and peace. Welcome to another video. This video uh, it took a little bit for me to prepare. I had to read through some, some papers because I really wanted to get some understanding on this topic. Uh, this topic that we'll be speaking on is the Ashkenazi Levite R1A DNA haplogroup. What's the origin of this R1A haplogroup? I'm R1A, uh, and I claim a Khazar descent. Is this a Khazarian Ashkenazi lineage? Well, uh, I do not think it is. Uh, unfortunately, I do not think this is our Khazar connection. But there are some interesting things in this article, and we'll talk about um, two articles, actually, and uh, discuss uh, the findings and, and uh, what uh, I believe these Hablo groups to originate. So the main article that we'll be looking into today, uh, I believe this might be one of the newest articles speaking on this topic, is the genetic variation in the R1A clade among the Ashkenazi Levites by chromosome. So this is a pretty detailed article, so I picked out some excerpts that I want to share with you all, and then I'll give you guys my uh, hypothesis on what I, on what I think. So starting off here in the abstract, it says approximately 300,000 men around the globe self-identify as Ashkenazi Levites, of whom two thirds were previously shown to descend from a single male. The emerging profile is of a Middle Eastern ancestor self-affiliating as a Levite. So this R1A clade that was found, it does originate in the Middle Eastern area. And he was a self-affiliating Levite. Now, we do not believe he was um, an actual blooded uh, Levite because this uh, R1A Levite clade is not widespread within other Jewish populations. Though it can be found very, very low. All right. Next excerpt. An illustrative example of the latter is the Haberwitz Rabbinical Levite Dynasty. Established by the migration of one Levite family from Girona, Catalonia, uh, to Horovitz, a small town near Prague, Czech Republic, circa 1400 CE. While claims for documented origin in medieval Spain have been made, the founder of the dynasty is considered to be Yeshaya Horovsky, Horus, Ish Horovitz, 1450 to 15. 14 CE. Genealogical records of the Howowitz patrilineal dynasty comprising no less than 15 subsequent generations are available. So we have this dynasty called the Howowitz Rabbinical Levite dynasty and there are certain members of this group who can track their generations back 15 generations. All right. So let's continue on in this study. It says first, the Kohen dynasty was studied and found to have a limited number of founding lineages that were shared between Ashkenazi and non-Ashkenazi Jews. The most frequent Kohen lineage comprising of 46.1% of contemporary self-identifying Kohen males is found within Hablo group J1P58, which is prevalent in the Middle East. Next, it was shown that the paternal ancestry found among Ashkenazi Levites is dominated by a set of tightly evolving Y chromosome lineages, falling within haplogroup R1A M198, which was, at the time of publication, the most resolved branch known on this evolutionary path. Other Havlo groups reported among Ashkenazi Levites demonstrated no additional significant founding event, and the Havlo group R1AM198 founder event was not shared with Sephardi Levites. So this excerpt is basically telling us that the majority of people who are Jews who identify as Kohens have J1P58, which uh, will show evidence later was found and uh, ancient Canaanite samples. So we believe that this could possibly be a Canaanite lineage uh, who became uh, assimilated into the Israelites and 
and was high respected and became a, a, a priestly caste. I believe Josephus even spoke on how there was one time where people who were not of the lineage of Levite could become a, a priest. We believe that the E markers would be your uh, Levitical markers, which I believe could be found in groups such as uh, not only Ashkenazi, but also uh, Sephardi Levites and Samaritan Levites as well. But let's continue on. What's the next excerpt? Importantly, the initial genetic analysis suggested in this first publication incorrectly attribute this Ashkenazi Levite lineage origin to Eastern Europe. See, this is how we know it's not a Khazarian uh, origin because it, it doesn't originate in Eastern Europe. And we see because there's barely any uh, findings in that location. There was a couple and we'll get into that later. Let's see. A follow-up study summarizing information from whole Y chromosome sequencing focused specifically on this Ashkenazi Levite lineage and confirmed that 65% of the 97 randomly assembled Ashkenazi Levites carry group R1AM198. Strikingly, the better resolved whole Y chromosome based phenologically of the group R1A showed that 100% of these samples could be reassigned to the refined haplogroup R1AM582. So this is the refined. It took a minute, but they found what haplogroup it was. And it's R1A5M582. This is the Ashkenazi R1A, the Ashkenazi Levite R1A. This distinctive R1AM582 lineage was found other than in Ashkenazi Jews, among 15.7% males self-affiliating as non-Ashkenazi Levites, and importantly, at low frequencies only in the Middle East, consistent with this location as its ancestral origin. So we come to the conclusion that this R1A, it's M582. It's not an original Levite branch, but it was assimilated within the Levites very early on because the Hobowitz dynasty can trace its lineage way back. They trace it back to uh, one of the sons of Levi, if I believe. I believe. So let's continue on and see what these populations are, because I, these populations are going to give us a clue to how this lineage could have entered the Levites. The genealogical records for three of the individuals with the Hobbitwood surname converged to a common male ancestor born at 1615 CE or 402 years before present. The observed sequence variation between these three samples is consistent with this proposed genealogy, and accordingly, their genealogical claim could not be refuted. This prompted us to use this node as an internal calibration point. The two additional individuals affiliating with the Horowitz dynasty formed the closest paraphyletic clade R1AYP268 to the described three sample cluster coaliciting with them 691 years before present. So it's basically saying that they used the Horowitz dynasty because the lineage was so strong uh, to, to find the origin and the migration path of this R1A lineage. Also in this study, just a quick note, they made notes about other haplogroups. Haplogroup E, we see, they say it has a deep-rooted branch. I'll just let you see that. You can read that in your own time. And here they also talked about haplogroup Q and haplogroup G, which are also haplogroups that could be found within the Khazarian Empire. Now, are these Khazarian lineages? More research has to be developed. But let's read this. The phylogeny obtained for haplogroup Q M378 comprising 5.2% of the Ashkenazi paternal variation shows a similar pattern to that observed for haplogroup G 
M377. So they're saying the Q and the G haplogroup group has similar patterns to each other as well. Herein, five new Jewish sequences from three Ashkenazi, one Moroccan, and one Yemenite Jew are presented. Hmm, so we see that it's within multiple populations. The Yemenite Jewish sample seems to fall within the Central Asian and Indian subcontinent variety. The three Ashkenazi samples form a tight cluster Q3 B853 coaliciting a thousand and uh, excuse me y'all 1,672 years before present. That was shared only with the previously reported Ashkenazi sample. The sequence from a Moroccan Jew and a previously reported sample of unclarified ancestry formed the closest branch coaliciting with the Ashkenazi samples 4,000 years ago. The deep split of this Jewish cluster from its closest sister clay is 32,000 years before present, leaving the phylogenetic origin of this lineage enigmatic. So they still need more studies, but it seems like this is showing Ashkenazi gene flow into Yemenites and into Moroccans, but the Q and the G spread near the same time. And could this be a Khazarian lineage? We're not sure. But back to the R1A, which is what we're talking about. It says, accordingly, all R1A Y2619 individuals, whether self-affiliating as Jews or non-Jews, whether Ashkenazi or non-Ashkenazi, whether Levites or non-Levites, are the direct male descendants of the paternal line of one common male ancestor who lived 1,743 years before present. So that means that this common ancestor for R1A Y 2619 would have popped up around 300 AD. On this excerpt, it says, evidently R1A Y 2619 is well nested within a plethora of phylogenetically close Middle Eastern sister clades, sampled in Iranian Azeris, a Kerman, a Yazidi, and one man from Iberia. This provides the needed evidence for its origin. However, the exact migration path of R1A Y2619 to Europe remains elusive. So while we don't know the uh, exact migration path, this gives us origins of it being in Persia. Areas of the ancient Persian Empire, the Sassanid Empire. Since this ancestor came around 300 AD, this would have to be after uh, the diaspora but perhaps this is just a later mutation and he mixed within the Sassanid empire but let's continue researching into it but that is our hypothesis it's not a Khazarian lineage it's a Persian Iranian lineage so when we look at this map here it's showing how it came from the Middle East and it migrated with the Ashkenazi Levites through the Italian route to the Rhine. But we also know about the Horowitz dynasty. So it's saying perhaps it went to Eastern Europe and then back to Spain or came across North Af Africa because the Horowitz dynasty say they came from Spain. But they've established that this have a group indeed traveled with the Ashkenazi communities. And it must have been a Persian have a group. So with that being our main conclusion, I want to go into one last paper uh, shortly. Phylogenetic application of whole Y chromosome sequences and the Near Eastern origin of Ashkenazi Levites. <clears throat> There's a couple of excerpts I want to point in here just to give you a more clear uh, conclusion on the Persian origins of this R1A haplogroup. In the discussion, it reads... Consistent with the previous conclusions. Nope, not that part. It reads, had the Caucasus region been the source for the Ashkenazi modal lineage, we likely would have found R1A M582 Y chromosomes in some of its 20 local populations examined in our sample of more than 2,000 Y chromosomes. 
So they're saying they would have found it in more people. Now, they did find it in the no gay. I forgot to highlight that above. They found it in one no gay, which would be a, a Khazarian connection because the no gays mix into the Khazars after the Kipchak Turks. But the fact that it's only one and not like a whole tribe, it's kind of strange. If that was a, a pure, if that was a Khazar lineage, it would be more uh, found, it was seen. It says in this next part, notably, the only non M582 sample we identified within the Z2122 haplogroup corresponds to an individual from the Aramaic speaking population claiming descent from the contemporary ancient Assyrians. So we have more from this area, Assyria, uh, Babylonia, Iran. This must have been one of the uh, lineages that latched on to the Levites after this diaspora and latched in particularly to a community who would have became the Ashkenazi community, but kept his Levitical status. How he got it, we don't know, but Josephus points to some people becoming Levites who weren't actually Levites. So that's about all that I have for you guys today here. Hopefully that was uh, clear and understandable, but I believe that this R1A lineage goes back to an Iranian population, a Persian population. Um, there is result, there is a history of Scythians and other nomadic tribes going down into these areas and invading these areas. I think the Scythians actually are the ones who helped take out the Assyrians. So there's possible RNA clades who could have went to the Middle East very early on, mutated in, in this way, and became an Israelite lineage, a Jewish lineage. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you get the understanding. And we're going to get into more Khazarian stuff. I got some more interesting facts and info for you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, shalom, grace, and peace.